Yeah! Hey everyone, so today I'm going to make a button to open the frunk on my Tesla Model 3. Now personally, I'm a big fan of the frunk. I use it all the time, especially for groceries or anything that has a strong smell so that I can keep the smell out of the cabin. I also love seeing the look on people's faces when I pop the hood and put my groceries in the frunk. Uh, but the problem with the frunk is that opening is a bit of a pain, especially when you have your hands full, you have to use your phone to open it. Now I try to make it easier by adding an NFC tag on the bumper here, but even that is a pain because you have to hold your phone uh, to the NFC tag for it to activate. Now you can use Google Assistant or Siri to open the frunk using your voice, um, but that would require, you know, cell connection for your car. So if your car is, you know, parked in a basement, for example, where it has no reception, that won't work. Uh, and also personally, I still find it weird talking to my phone in public. Now, wouldn't it be great if there was just a button that you could press, just like how the trunk works, but for the frunk? So while researching possible ways to make a frunk button, I found two possible methods. Uh, the first method is wiring a second button to the emergency release of the frunk in here. So doing that is actually quite easy. All you do is you pop this hood open or this cover open. And basically all you have to do is short the purple and the black wire. So what does that mean? That means connect the purple and black wire and it will simulate a button press of this emergency release. Now that's really simple, um, very easy to do, but the problem is that this button works all the time. It's an emergency release. So if someone is trapped in here, they press this button and this hood will open. It doesn't matter if the car is locked, it will open. So that's the problem because you don't want your frunk to be accessible when your car is locked. So it's convenient, but insecure. The second way is to use the wires inside the tow hook cover or the tow eye cover down here. So for those unfamiliar with this, there are two wires under the tow cover that let you open the frunk if the 12 volt battery is dead. Now, luckily these wires still work if the 12 volt battery is working in the car, provided the car is unlocked. So method two here is more secure, but slightly inconvenient because you have to unlock the car first. Having the phone in your pocket or the phone key nearby uh, is not enough. Either way, I'm gonna use method two to make my frunk button because I prefer a secure frunk. So to make this button, I have some cables. Uh, I have some eye terminals. So these things here, basically just an eye let with a end where you can put the cable in and you just crimp it down. Uh, and also I have some heat shrink. So this is just to heat shrink around the eye terminals uh, around the cable as well. And finally, we have the button itself. So this is a push button. Uh, you just push it like that. Uh, and it's normally open. What that means is if there is no power, uh, the circuit is not completed until you push down. So I prepared the cables earlier. This is the negative terminal here uh, with the eye terminal heat shrinked to the black cable here and the other end is just the bare the bare wire for now so similarly here is the positive cable uh, again the i terminal there is crimped and then heat shrunk around one end of the cable uh, i wound it up so i can get all on the screen but this is the rest of the positive cable and then somewhere near the end of the positive cable i have wired in line the push button. So basically this cable is disconnected until I push this button here, completing the circuit. So the idea is to connect the I terminal to the 12 volt battery of the Model 3, which is up here underneath this cover. Once that's connected, I will run this cable along the side of the frunk all the way down to the front bumper. Uh, I want the button end to be down there where the tow hook cover is. Once our cable gets down to here where the tow hook cover is, I will connect the button end or the, the exposed cable here on the side with the button uh, to the positive terminal down here. And then I will do something similar for the negative terminal. Uh, and this end, again, the bare end will be connected to the negative terminal down here. And obviously the, the eye hook end will be connected to the negative terminal of the 12 volt battery. Now, the idea is uh, we will complete the circuit when we push this button, uh, hopefully allowing us to activate the frunk uh, using this, uh, these two cables down here. 
So before we install anything, let's make sure that you know the, the cable works and everything. So we're gonna remove this cover and then to access the 12 volt battery, we have to remove this air inlet piece up here. Okay, this piece gone. Uh, and now we have the 12 volt battery up here, which should be accessible now. Okay, let's connect the cables to the battery. So I'm not gonna do anything permanent yet. I'm just gonna use some alligator clips to just connect it to the battery. So negative lead to the negative terminal on the battery. And similarly for the positive one, alligator clip to the positive lead and then to the positive terminal on the battery. Okay, so these are the two wires dangling from the, the 12 volt battery and the Model 3. I'm gonna close the frunk and have the cables just hanging out there. So that should be okay. Now I'm gonna connect the negative cable to the negative terminal down here. I'm just gonna use some tape to hold it in place for now because we're just testing it. So just put it on top, just tape it down so that they're touching. And then same thing for the positive cable here. I'm just gonna put it on top and I'm just gonna just temporarily just tape it down so that we can test that this works. So they should both be connected now. Uh, if I press the button, I suspect nothing will happen. Yep, nothing is happening because as I mentioned before, this only works if the car is unlocked. So let me just quickly unlock the car. So right now the car is locked. We unlock the car, the car is now unlocked. Now, if I press the button, the front should open. Beautiful. Okay, we now know the wires and buttons are all working. Time to run the cables properly uh, and also find a good place to hide that button. Uh, we're gonna remove the front tub and then run the cables down uh, from the 12 volt area on the side all the way down to the tow hook area down the front there. Uh, now, I'm not gonna go through the details of how to remove this. I did the details on how to do this uh, in my NFC tag video. So check that video out if you want detailed steps on how to remove the front tub. Okay, so the front is semi removed right now. I have it propped up with my glasses case so that we can work on it. Uh, but basically the battery is there. We're gonna connect the cables there and then route them along this side underneath the front tub. Uh, and then here at the front, let me get some light in there. There is a small hole or a gap, small gap in there. And then we should be able to drop the cables down there and then pick them up from the toe hook cover here. Okay, so it turns out I did have to take off the whole front tub because that hole here doesn't actually go down to the bumper. I should have known that since I've taken off the bumper before, but basically to get down to the front hole here, you have to go all the way down in there. So let me try and show you guys what I mean. Okay, so I tried, but I couldn't get a good angle to show you guys where the cable needs to go through, but I will do my best uh, with my fingers to show you where the cable needs to go. So I wiggled, the, I wiggled this cable here and I can see it uh, basically moving down. I'll have to draw it on the screen just down past that blue bolt is where you can see it moving. I think you can see it's a little bit on camera now. So if we thread our cables down into that triangular hole there, we should be able to reach it uh, through the front tow hook area. Oh my God, the struggle was real. But I managed to get the wires through, as you can see here, I even managed to get the button through here. Um, and this is the other end of the cable up here. They're connected. Uh, so I'm just gonna clean up the routing of this cable a little bit. I don't want it to be dangling here. Uh, and then we can figure out where to store this button. Okay, so I ended up running the cables just uh, down the side like that. And I just kind of taped it along the existing harnesses. And then that's where the cable goes through out the tow hook cover there. So for connecting the cables to the tow hook wires up here. I don't plan on doing anything permanent. I want this to be all removable uh, if I need to remove it in the future. So I'm just gonna do something simple. I'm just gonna wrap 
the bare end to you know just the, the metal part of the the cable here and then I'm just going to use some tape to just kind of tape around it and I think that should be good enough for my purposes. Okay I've tucked the cables back underneath the bumper here uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put the button somewhere underneath the bumper um, because underneath here it's just foam if you can see so inside behind the plastic bumper is just this black foam so we should be able to just wedge it there or maybe cut out a bit of the foam create some space for the button to sit and then I'll probably just double side tape it uh, to somewhere in there I want it so that I'm able to press the bumper so that the bumper flexes in and hopefully that will activate the push button here all right, so after fiddling around with this a bit, uh, I've settled on this spot here. So that's the button there. It's currently not being pressed by the bumper, but the idea is when I reinstall the cover, I've put a bit of a felt or a bit of um, foam on the back here. So hopefully that will give me enough, uh, I guess, clearance uh, to be able to push the button when I press the total cover uh, somewhere in this area here. So let's put that back together and see if it works. Okay, moment of truth. Yeah! So at this point you're probably wondering what happens if you're driving and a rock hits the bumper or something, you know, will the hood pop up like that? So, uh, as a test, uh, I have wired up the button uh, and I'm going to see if it will actually open the trunk while I'm driving. So currently I am driving, you know, roughly 35 kilometers per hour and the car is currently unlocked. So the doors are unlocked and if I hit the button now, the front does not open. So that's great. So Tesla have thought about it. Uh, when the car is in motion, uh, the front tow hook um, wires won't open the front. So that's it, my front button. It works super well. Uh, I'm actually super happy the way it works. Now, obviously it's not perfect. You do have to have the car unlocked before it works. Now, a perfect solution would be for Tesla to update the software to you know, allow these two connectors to work when the phone key is nearby. That would be perfection. So when the car is locked, what I'll have to do is I'll have to walk up to the door, press the door handle to unlock the car, and then I should be able to use my front button to open the front. Anyway, hope this is useful and thanks for watching.